Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we have a review that I am a little bit excited about and I think this one will be pretty damn special actually. So we're going to go to Greece once again for the first time in a little while and also probably the last time for a little while actually. But I sincerely hope that I can get some more Greek beers to review for you here on the channel. We'll need to see how that goes. But this is the last of the beers that I bought during my trip to Greece back in April. April of 2018 and I think we've saved a really pretty good one for last actually. For this review then we are going to go to Athens and we're going to visit another one of the numerous uh, Greek gypsy breweries and this is a beer that is very very highly rated actually. So for this review then we are going to go to Dark Crops Brewery for the first time and we're having a taste of the Freezing Moon which is an Imperial Stout coming in at 10% ABV and apparently this is the best selling Imperial Stout in Greece so it will probably be a pretty damn good beer. My experience with the Greek craft beer so far has been very very positive. I've encountered some very very nice breweries um, Seven Island, Solo, Satyr Brew, Strange Brew, Septem, Nocturnum, uh, Chios, uh, who else we had, Noblemen, you know, I've tried some really, really interesting styles and, uh, and breweries from Greece and it's, it's been really cool. I've noticed that in the Southern Europe it tends to be the case that if a country is good at winemaking then they also tend to be very good at craft beer. Greece fits that rule obviously, Slovenia, Croatia, Italy, Spain, Portugal, France as well all seem to fit into that uh, category so yeah if you uh, if you find a country with good wine just wait and see how their craft beer evolves because it will uh, no doubt turn out to be pretty good so go to Greece visit it beautiful country with lovely lovely people the countryside uh, that we visited the Peloponnese was amazing and I do hope that I can get back to Greece at some point and uh, and try some more craft beers for you and explore a little bit more you wouldn't have thought that you would get some uh, some awesome craft beers from Greece but trust me the quality of the stuff that you find down there is uh, is really pretty damn good actually so make sure you do that Crete and uh, Thessaloniki I think are going to be my next places to have a look at so um, yeah go and visit Greece big shout out to my Greek friends as well and uh, that would be Georgios Muratidis who um, studied here at Lund University with my friend Georgios Mavroglis who I went to school with and also Christina who I studied at Aberdeen University with these guys all enjoy watching my Greek videos but the biggest shout out in this video though goes to Vasilis the owner of Dark Crops Brewery so some languages when it comes to producing these videos some languages make it very difficult to find information when it comes to, to breweries and Greek is one of those so I wrote to him and said look I've got a bottle of your beer I want to do a tasting video and uh, can you give me some information on the brewery that I can include include in the video and he sent me this awesome t-shirt and told me all the information that you guys are going to hear in a minute so a huge thank you to Vasilis for uh, helping me with producing this video and I can only apologise that it's taken so long to get out there because you know life just took over if you're a regular viewer of the channel you'll know baby came had to go to Japan and all of this kind of thing so um, yeah it's uh, it's taken a little while than I thought to produce this one but honestly a huge thank you to you Vasilis for making this review possible. I have to say the response of the Greek brewers to these videos as well has been really pretty damn awesome actually. So um, yeah, that's, that's another great thing about the Greek craft beer industry. It is very, very kind of passionate and uh, with great people involved in it. So give them your support when you get the chance. But yes, let's get on to actually the actual review now. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Dark Crops Brewery. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I said. There's all the usual social media down there too. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for the Greek beers that I've reviewed for you, and that is added to whenever I get the opportunity. Like I said, I do hope that I can review Greek beers quite regularly 
on the channel over the next few years. We just need to see how that will go though. But as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Dark Crops Brewery. So, Dark Crops Brewery was founded by Vasilis Segos back in 2016 and these guys, as I mentioned, are a gypsy brewery based primarily in the Athens area. So, he had been home brewing since 2010 and apparently he learned a lot of his skills just from reading lots of books magazines and also researching on the internet a lot. He said that he probably read everything that was uh, available uh, back in the, you know, the early 2010s and things like this. Um, but he won several Greek homebrewing competitions and then he won a bronze medal in the American National Homebrew Competition with one of his stouts and it was this particular incident that really encouraged him to go on and turn professional and create Dark Crops Brewery. So apparently he used to brew a batch of beer every Saturday morning and then he would drink the one from the previous weekend's brew with his friends and family in the afternoon but he says that his favourite beer styles are you know like American pale ales and uh, lower alcohol style beers but oddly this brewery has become more known for its uh, its stouts they've got some very interesting high alcohol beers there and um, but he chose the heavy metal and demon imagery for the brewery because he loves metal music big fan of a lot of bands similar to me actually and he wanted to kind of break convention in Greece and just stand out a little bit but as a result of this he's done a few collaboration brews with Rotting Christ who are a Greek black metal band and this includes this one at the Freezing Moon and also the Non-Servium as well and uh, as of February 2020 when I'm filming this review for you according to Untapped Freezing Moon have nine different types of beer and hopefully like I say I can review some more of those for you at some point in the future but as far as I remain when I was in Athens and went to visit a few of the different beer shops, um, this was the only one that I was uh, that I was able to find actually. So um, yeah, definitely a brewery that you want to check out if you get the chance by all accounts. And I've heard that this is a very very good beer. As I mentioned, this one apparently is the best selling imperial stout in uh, in Greece. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Dark Crops Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website, which you'll find in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages for a little bit more information on the different beers that they do. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one. So I'll just let you have a little look at the t-shirt they sent me. You can see the goat's head, the sort of satanic goat's head on this, which is pretty awesome. And on the back, you can also see the symbol for the brewery there, if the camera is aligned. And you'll also find that on the bottle here as well. So at the top, you can see the sort of Grim Reaper kind of sheath um, symbol on this one. There you can see the gimp mask. And um, apparently the name Dark Crops came from a creative agency who told him that he should make something as dark as the um, as the music that he listens to. That was the exact quote that he gave me in the Facebook messages and stuff like this. But as you can see, 10% high gravity stout. So I think this one will be pretty special. It says it's only 20 IBUs, so I'm wondering if this one will be more of a sweet imperial stout rather than... Um, you know, quite a, a sort of Russian imperial one. It says, this beer is great for ageing. The taste and aroma will mellow out over time, allowing different characteristics of the beer to shine through and will peak at two years of ageing. And this one actually will be around that because it was April 2018 that I uh, bought this beer and it says that it was bottled in December of 2017. So it will just be around two, two, and two years and about two months old at the moment that I'm reviewing this one for you, depending when in December it was uh, it was bottled. But yeah, plain bottle cap on this one, that would be cool actually if they had their own bottle caps, but if it's a gypsy brewery then that's a little bit difficult for them. But as you can see, that is what was on the side there. There you can see the English and you can also see the Greek on top. I always like to wind up my uh, my friends uh, Yorgios that their language is just like maths it's equations everywhere but it's a very it's a very difficult language grammatically from what I understand and it's also on a completely different arm 
when it comes to linguistics and things like that. So Greek is a very difficult language to learn. It took me about three days to learn how to say it Fraristo properly and then, you know, Paragalo and things. It was I don't think other than, you know, Japanese obviously because my uh, girlfriend is Japanese, I don't think I've encountered a language that is that I've not learned to say at least one word in. Uh, in three days, you know, it's I can always at least say one or two words. But yeah, as you can see, a little bit of smoke on the opening there. So we'll get this guy out and into the glass. And as I say, a huge thank you to Vasilis for providing all that information on the brewery and the beer and things like that for the channel. That has been that was absolutely awesome of him. You know, sending me a T-shirt to um, for the brewery as well. That was. Um, you know, above and beyond, so it's great. I'll definitely be keeping this one. Maybe use it as the, when I move apartments, I'll maybe be using it for the background or something like that, because that is pretty cool. And as I say, this is a nice way to sign off from this kind of Greek mini series. But um, as I say, this will definitely not be the last Greek beer review that you will ever see on the channel. So, um, yeah, as you can see with this one, this has poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour, which is exactly what you would expect from an imperial stout. Um, it poured with about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say medium tan head on this, and it's faded away to be a very thin foamy layer. You know, at 10% alcohol, you might expect this one to uh, to have a little bit of head. You know, it's usually around the kind of 12% mark that the heads will start to struggle to, uh, to retain, of course, but I mean, that's not the biggest deal. It's more about the the um, the flavour of the beer of course. If I hold this one up to the light you do get a little bit of a kind of coca-cola coloured edge to it when the light comes through. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and just a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. But I mean overall it looks pretty much as you would expect from a big imperial stout. Now I'm very curious as I say to see how this one turns out so we'll take a little look at the aroma and then we're going to taste this one. So aroma wise, this one, um, you know, this is this to me really smells like it's going to be a very sweet imperial stout. Um, it's actually it comes across to me as being very well balanced. Actually, it doesn't lean towards the brown sugars too much. It doesn't lean towards the black malts too much. It doesn't lean towards the chocolates too much. It's got a lot of different things going on in it. So um, with this one then. Underneath you can smell a little bit of that roasty and toasty thing that you want. Some of the black malts coming out. I do wonder if there might be a bit of German carafa in there or something. Um, because it's definitely got a little bit of that smoothness to it, which is nice. But you've also got the chocolate in there, and the chocolate to me comes across as being quite well balanced. It's got a little bit of the higher cocoa note there, sort of 80% cocoa. But at the same time, you've got a few kind of woody and vanilla notes to this one. The vanilla is quite minimal compared to what you'll find in some stouts, right enough, but there is definitely a little hint of vanilla in there, but quite a bit of a woody undertone for me. And that gives you the impression of some more kind of milky chocolate, I think. So the chocolate, even in that, is quite well balanced. Definitely some nice brown sugars. It comes across as quite a, a toasty caramel to be honest with you. It's not too sort of treacly or molasses -y or anything like that. Um, it really is quite um, quite sort of smooth and very lightly kind of brown sugary and toasty this one. Like I said, it, it's not got the, quite got the sweetness that you might get from some caramels. It is more like um, it's almost, it is almost a bit almost a bit more like a kind of biscuit cookie type thing that you're getting out of this actually which is quite interesting but to me the thing that really sticks out to me is it does this beer to me really comes across as quite woody and that seems to be the kind of linchpin of the beer and the chocolate sort of infuse into that whole woody vibe that the beer has there's definitely a bit of a, a brown sugary note to it as well and um, but it's also got some a little bit of that kind of roasty toasty quality underneath I do wonder if there's a bit of carafa or something here. I don't know. It, I wonder, there's something in my head that thinks there might be a bit of oat in this. Um, oat or oatmeal or something. The way that the smoothness comes out in the aroma of this beer definitely makes me think oatmeal. It's just got a little bit of that almost slightly bready, oaty kind of vibe to it. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a sort of imperial oatmeal stout. It just says a high gravity stout, which obviously means when they're doing the mash, hell of a lot of sugar and things like that. It's all about the original gravity and things and uh, 
plumping it up a little bit later um, before you do your fermentation. It's all about getting those sugars out of the malt grains. But I've got a feeling that this is like an imperial oatmeal stout with some kind of chocolate malts and uh, you know caramels and things like that. I think this will be an, an oat. I've got a feeling it's an imperial oatmeal stout. But we'll uh, we'll need to see about that. In terms of the hoppy side of things, then when this beer is about two years old, you're not going to get too much out of that. You can detect the remnants of some kind of grassy notes to the beer. Um, it's got a little touch of earthiness to it. Some there's not really any floral qualities to the beer, but it does have a little bit of fruit to it. You can smell a little bit of a sharp kind of raisiny note. Um, but it's not too sharp like you would get if it was oxidised. Um, some nice, as I say, raisiny notes, a little bit of a figgy quality, some black currants, blackberries maybe, but those are all kind of infused together. For me, when you take this in a bit more deeply, you really get a little bit of that nice raisiny note out of it. Um, so yeah, the hops that are in this one could well be, you know, if it's an American hop they've used, it's most likely to be well you met, but with it being a European brewery, I would be willing to bet that it's either um, Northern Brewer from Germany or perhaps Bramlings Cross from uh, England. But I think going by the aromas, I've got a feeling it might be more likely to be Northern Brewer because it doesn't quite have some of the phenolic notes that you get from uh, from Bramlings Cross. But um, yeah, always fun to play against the hops, like I say. But you know, when it's this old, it's quite hard to tell. So don't take that word as gospel. But um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we go on. Take a bit of time, as I always say, to enjoy the aroma. That's always half the experience when it comes to craft beer. But we'll taste this one now then. So this one is the Freezing Moon, a 10% Imperial Stout. What I suspect is an oatmeal Imperial Stout from Dark Rocks Brewery, a gypsy brewery, contract brewery, whatever you want to call them, based in Athens and Greece. Huge thank you to Vasilis for all the information um, in this video and the t-shirt of course as well. Let's have a taste of this, the last of the Greek beers that I bought in April of 2018. Slange, Skoll, Yamas. Yeah. That's really nice. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel and things, it's actually the first impression of this that this mouth that this beer, in terms of its mouthfeel, is quite a bit lighter than I was expecting it to be. I mean, at ten percent, this isn't the heaviest of imperial stouts that you're going to come across. You are going to get ones that are, you know, eleven point five, twelve percent. You will find ones that are higher than this. But even ones I've had that are 10%, they are um, a little bit thicker. And that's the interesting thing, because I've commented that with certain countries and things, um, the mouthfeel of beers can change. Like, for example, all these Japanese craft beers that I've reviewed for you, doesn't matter what style it is, you are always going to have that element of crispness. And um, this beer, if I blind tasted this, come to think of it, I might think this is a Japanese Imperial Stout because they do like the mouthfeels to be a bit lighter. This one is packed full of flavour, but that's the first thing that springs to mind for me with this one is that it, um, the mouthfeel is a little bit lighter. And when you think about it, it makes sense because of how hot Greece is going to be, you know, most of the time at least 30 degrees. When I was there in April, it was starting to get really hot, you know. But I will say, that one, this is a really, really nice beer. The IPAs that I've tried, I've tried a Greek Trippel, a Greek Rauch beer, um, you know, a Greek uh, Scotch Ale as well, and loads of IPAs, Paleos, um, and Imperial Red as well. The quality of the Greek beers really is very, very good. Um, so, you know, generally you have to take your hats off to the Greek. They're, the Greeks, they're very good when it comes to... Uh, the food, the Greek wine was very nice as well, and of course now you're getting some really awesome craft beers as well, so make sure you check them out. But this one is lovely, this is definitely a nice one, I'm glad that I saved this for the last review from that little Greek mini-series. Hmm. So let's try and break the flavour of this one down then. So when you take this beer in, you're going to feel the nice juicy fruity notes, but the middle of your palate 
really dries out quite nicely and I will say pretty sure I was wrong about this one in terms of it being an oatmeal stout because it actually dries out quite a bit the further you go into the aftertaste as well so this one it does start to lean more towards the roasty and toasty end of the spectrum I do wonder if it was a, a fresh imperial stout um, you know would it um, you know, would it feel a little bit thicker and things? That's what I'm very curious about. But as it stands, this it, it's lovely. Um, it really is very good. If you get the chance to try this one, have a go at it. But yeah. So in the middle of your palate then, you can feel that roasty toasty black malt just blanketing the middle of your palate. I do wonder with it if it is... Um, a straight black malt that's in here, there's something that's telling me it has a little bit of a kind of well-fired bread crust element blanket in the palate as well. There's something about that tells me there might be a little bit of carafe malt in there which is um, from Weirman in Bamberg in Germany. There is just something about the beer that's, that's like that. As you move into the, the centre of the palate, you'll get a little bit of the brown sugar out of this one and it's a lot less present than I thought it was going to be. You'll get a little bit of that there and that's what's covering up the 10% alcohol here. But as you move further out from that, um, you start to get the chocolate. And it's quite a, for me, it's quite a high um, cocoa chocolate, but it gets a little bit sweeter as you come further forward on the palate. So in, as I say, very centre of your palate, a little bit of the brown sugar covering up the booze. Outside of that, you get the the kind of darker chocolates, but then as you move further forward on the palate, I think it becomes a little bit more like a kind of milk chocolate, and all of that is sitting on top of this kind of roasty bread crust black malt layer. It's really interesting that. Um, what I'll say about this one is this beer strikes me as being very much a kind of straight shooter almost. It's it's um, one of these ones where it's not overly complex, but it's just brewed and it's done very well. And there's nothing wrong with that, of course. Um, it's 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 a really, pardon me, I'm getting a little bit of gas. Um, but yeah, it, it's a very much a straight shooter beer. This, but it's very very good quality, and that's that's really what makes it stand out for me. I, I like this. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. So yeah, if you go to the front corners of your palate and move in a little bit you'll start to get some of the woody undertones, but they're nowhere near as prominent as I was thinking they would be from the aroma. I thought this was going to be quite a woody and oatmeal-y imperial stout. And what I will say about this one is as you go further into the aftertaste, to a degree you'll notice at the back of your palate it smooths out a little bit, but further towards the front you start to get more of the kind of dry, roasty toasty black malts out of this one. So there's a lot of things going on in this um, imperial stout but it's very as i say it's very straight up and very layered in the way those flavors are kind of structured actually but thumbs up to dark crops for this this is a um, it strikes me as a little bit of an old school imperial stout and that's you know that's probably why i like it it's got a little bit of a nostalgia value for me and um, in terms of the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate You've got a lovely little bit of earthiness there, and it's quite a dark earthiness actually, so maybe there could be a little bit of English hop in here. The English earthiness, as I've always said, is a bit darker. Then again, it could be something American that's in here. Only 20 IBUs though, so this is not one of the beers that's going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness, and that both from the hops and from the malts, because remember the malts, um, such as black malt and things, can contribute to that a little bit. But as you come further forward along the sides of the palate, it smooths out very quickly, um, uh, you get a little bit of a kind of slightly herbally quality to this one. As you reach the front corners of the palate, you can detect a teeny, teeny bit of floral quality remaining from those hops. But then around the very front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy, which is uh, which is really quite nice. And behind the front curve of the palate, you've got that little oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. Like I said, when you take this one in, the fruits come in a little bit sharp. And then they you know, just give you the more juicy characters a little bit later on. So yeah, when we take this one in, you've got a little bit of that kind of raisiny, maybe cherryish 
kind of flavour. And I'm finding that when I'm concentrating on that front part of the palate, I really get a hell of a lot of um, roastiness kind of coming out underneath that. So yeah, when you take this one in, a little bit of sharpness, cherryish and um, cherryish and raisiny sharpness. But as you move further forward from that, you get a you get a very nice kind of um, blackberry black currenty flavour. As you go further into the aftertaste, it kind of fades away a little bit and becomes a little bit more kind of figgy in my mind. Um, but some of the, there is a little bit of that reasony sharpness just lingers there on the front of the palate too. But yeah, the fruitiness out of this one is quite nice. Um, it's got a lovely... the, the, the way the black currenty blackberry notes come out of this it's quite juicy, so that does make me wonder if there's a bit of will you met in here. Classic um, Imperial Stout hop actually in the States, that one. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's hot. If we're talking about the hops, I think it could be it could be Northern Brewer and will you met with a little bit of... I wouldn't be surprised if there's all three in it because it does have... There's elements of English hop to this one with the earthiness. Um, it's got a little bit of the more kind of juicy notes you might get from the American hops. Um, so I'm not sure about um, about Northern Brewer, but I do think perhaps Bramlin's Cross and Will You Met in this one. I'd be very curious to know that. But yeah, the hops um, are al always present an interesting point. But I mean, overall, this is a really quite nice Imperial Stout. Quite different from the other ones I've had in recent times. So the, the Scandinavian Imperial Stouts, of course, are very, very thick and tend to be very, very sweet. This one's a little bit more kind of old school, lighter and easier to drink. And um, it really, this this is quite a nice stout in that sense. The thing that Vasilis said to me was he wasn't sure, he, he didn't understand why people wanted to drink this beer in the, the summer. Because he says this beer, all year round, it gets good sales. And he doesn't know why people still want to drink something like this in the uh, in the summer because of how heavy it is. Um, but, you know, I would say that from my experience, it comes across as lighter in the mouthfeel. And that's probably how it gets away with it. It actually, in some ways, reminds me of the Dragon Stout that you get from Jamaica. That's a very popular beer over there. I still get Jamaicans commenting on that video. So this one, in terms of Imperial Stouts, it does remind me a little bit of the Jamaican Dragon Stout because of that light mouthfeel it has. So let's talk about that then to round off the video. Um, so overall, I would say that this beer is kind of mid-bodied. It's definitely light bodied for the Imperial Stout style though. The carbonation does have a little bit of crispness to it, which is interesting. Um, I would say that overall, the mouthfeel of this one is pretty wet, but it does have a little bit of a dry element to it as well. I was really expecting this to be a kind of slightly thicker, smooth oatmeal stout, but it, it's really not like that at all. It's light and crisp and it's got a good bit of dryness to it. So the bitterness the IBUs and stuff, it does tell you that it's 20 IBUs. I might have guessed that it was a, a little bit more than that, to be honest. I probably would have guessed around the kind of 30, 40 mark for this one. But a lot of the, as I say, you get a little bit of that earthiness in the back corners of the palate. You get some kind of dryness in the middle of your palate from the malts too. But yeah, generally, it's, this is not the most bitter of Imperial Stouts that you're going to come across. The fruitiness in this one is a little bit sharp in the beginning, but it smooths out and becomes more juicy later on. And the malt base, like I said, um, a little bit roasty and toasty and dry. There is a little bit of sweetness in the centre of it, but to me, this is quite a... It's almost got a little bit of that kind of dry stout element to it as well, but quite a bit of crispness too. So, um, yeah, a really interesting one. This one that's definitely made me think a little bit, and um, it's one that I definitely... Uh, have enjoyed checking out. So I do hope that I can try some more different beers from Dark Crops. I'd be very curious to try the other one that they did with the um, with Rotting Christ, the uh, Non-Servium I think it's called. But um, yeah, a beautiful beer this one and as I said I'm glad that I kept this one to uh, round off the sort of Greek mini-series if you like. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. The Freezing Moon, a really interesting, quite nostalgic Imperial Stout at 10% from Dark Crops Brewery, a gypsy brewery in the Athens area. So yeah, once again, a huge thank you to you guys for watching the video. A big thank you to Vasilis for giving me all the information and the t-shirt for this one. I hope you've enjoyed my Greek reviews and as I say, hopefully I can get more uh, Greek beers to review for you on the channel at some point sooner rather than later but um, yeah thank you as always let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are 
from Dark Crops Brewery and uh, as I say hopefully I can get some more of those to review soon but it's been great to review this one for you and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this review and the other great reviews that I've done for you. Until the next time, Slange just now, make sure you check out my other videos, do consider subscribing to the channel, check out the Greek playlist and I will catch you guys very soon. The Freezing Moon Imperial Stout at 10% ABV from Dark Crops Brewery in Athens in Greece. Until the next time, Slange just now, I'll catch you later. Slange, Skull, Yamas, make sure you check out Dark Crops.